Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just tell him that right now? Lord, you're the way maker. You are the way maker. Hallelujah. Many of us, we come in here tonight with maybe something in front of us, a mountain, a need, a miracle, uh, somewhere where God needs to meet the need. Who am I talking to tonight? How many need God to do something, to show up, to meet your need, to work in your life tonight? The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And so many times we can come to a worship service and, and forget 
what God did yesterday. Forget what God did two weeks ago. Forget what, how God healed me and, and saved me and all of that. And that can be our focus. And we can not realize that He is our way maker. He is the miracle worker. And, and we almost lose out on our blessing. We almost lose out on our miracle. We almost lose out on what God wants to do in our life. The Bible says in spite of people trying to kill him, trying to wreck his name, trying to tarnish his name, King David encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's what we're just, I just want us to do a little practical exercise tonight of Christianity 101. Would somebody just encourage yourself in the Lord? How do I do that? God, I need a breakthrough right now, but Lord, I remember that you showed up for me last time. I know, remember that you healed me last time. I remember, God, when I had a financial need and I prayed and I was able to say, look what the Lord has done. God, I remember when I needed you to touch my mind and, 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 and thwart off the enemy. But God, I said in Jesus' name and you showed up and you worked in that situation. That's how we encourage ourselves in the Lord. So would you just do that right now, child of God? God, I bless your name because you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord, I bless you because you are a healer. You are the great physician. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals all of our diseases. God, there's no need too great for you because you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides all of our needs. God, you are the miracle worker. You are the way maker. You are the one who calls those things which are not as if they are. You are the one who makes the crooked path straight. You are the one who heals broken bodies. You are the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. And we worship you tonight. We acknowledge you tonight. Hallelujah. God, we remind ourselves, look what the Lord has done. We remind ourselves of the faithfulness of God. We remind ourselves what you have done in our lives, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody just give the Lord some praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you got to stir it up, child of God. I know we're missing a lot of people tonight. Paul told Timothy, fan, fan the flame of the gift that's on the inside of you. Amen? Hallelujah. One more time, just raise your hands in this house. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha. Just give him the fruit of your lips right now. Just say, Lord, I bless you, Lord. God, I praise you, God. You are a way maker. You are not a dead God. You are a real God. You are a risen Savior, Lord. You are real. You are seated on the throne. You are able to heal. You are able to save. You are able to deliver. You are able to meet the needs. You are able to say yes when everybody else says no. Hallelujah. God, we worship you tonight in the name of Jesus. We magnify you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap one more time in this house? How many is thankful to be in church tonight? I feel good today. Can I just testify? I shared a Facebook post, and 10, no, oh my goodness, 10 years ago, eight years ago, I was water baptized in that very tank right there. Hallelujah. But I, I want to encourage someone tonight because I was just thinking, like, what can I say, Lord, to help somebody? I didn't want to get baptized, but I wanted to serve God. And lots of people want to serve God. They want the blessing of God, but they don't want to take that step of obedience. And God will only do certain things when we obey him. Faith isn't like, oh, I see this phone right here, and I know God's going to do... It's not what we can see. It's not what we can touch or feel. But the Bible says faith is the, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And sometimes, child of God, to activate that faith, you got to step out of your comfort zone. you got to step into the waters of bap whatever it is, baptism, the prayer closet, the Word of God. God wants you to step out so he can show you what he can do. I, I, I'm, I, I, can, I know what I can do in my own flesh, in my own strength, but there's some things... That only happen when we say, Lord, I'm at my wit's end. I'm done. You take the wheel, Jesus. You take control. I'm stepping out. And I believe there's several people in here tonight. You, you, you do need to be water baptized. But not only that, God's calling you to step into deeper realms, deeper levels, deeper times of prayer with him. 
That's what revival is. We can get be up in here shouting and dancing and all that and leave here changed. That's not revival. But revival is when the church, and I believe we're there, starts saying, God, we want more of you. We want more of you, more of your presence, more of your word. Change us, mold us, shape us. Do whatever you have to do, God. That's revival, child of God. Praise God. Can we say thank you, Jesus, one more time? Amen. <clears throat> So we welcome you to Believer's Church tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And um, let's not forget, Saturday at 7 o'clock is our prayer meeting. And we are anticipating a mighty, awesome time in the house of the Lord. And um, we encourage you to come and pray with us. A church or a family or a couple that prays together, days together. Come on, somebody. You're getting it. Just kidding. But um, it's so important. So we encourage you to please come pray with us if you have not been. And uh, God, God's, he's, he's amazing. He's working. He's moving. And uh, just like that step of obedience, there's certain things that only happen when we pray. So I encourage you, come to prayer meeting on Saturday. And then on Sunday in the morning service, we are anticipating an awesome time in the house of the Lord as well. Um, just before we move on with the announcements, can we play that awakening video? I don't know if everybody saw that, but we, we just want to get this marked in your calendars, marked in your heads, and uh, set this weekend like aside. Like, come to the house of God. Come and support. God's going to show up. It's going to be awesome. Please watch the video. Hey, everybody. Wayne Bustard here, senior pastor of Believer's Church. And I'm so excited to invite you to a very special weekend, April 26, 27, and 28. It's our annual awakening conference. I'm so pleased to let you know that this year, our guest speaker is Jonathan Suber from Round Rock, Texas. God is going to move. There's gonna be miracles, signs, wonders. People will be healed, saved, and delivered. You, criticize you, be negative against you, try to talk you out of your miracle, and you've gotta learn how to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to thy word. Uh, I know I'm almost out of time. I've only got five minutes, but I want to preach to somebody. Who am I talking to? That what God is putting you through, nobody understands right now. You need to raise your hands and say, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Don't stop till you're ready to birth it. And we just can't wait to see you there. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday and Saturday night at 7 o'clock and Sunday morning at 11. Right here at 465 Alexander Avenue. That's April 26, 27, 28. Believer's Church, see you there. I feel like everybody that's in the middle of a miracle needs to run up here right now. If you're in the middle of a miracle, can I get up here by you guys? Come on. <laughs> I'm in the middle. Come on. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. It may be physical. It may be cataracts. It may be crickling. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I'm in the middle of something. If it's sickness in your body, raise your hand. If it's sickness in your body, raise your hand. 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 Sickness. Let this turn into a prayer service. Hallelujah. Amen. You do not want to miss that weekend. Um, it's always an exciting time to have a, a guest minister. And uh, Pastor Wayne and Jonathan Suber have been friends for multiple years. And I watched some of his old school sermons from like the 90s. And uh, it is a blessing. And um, you don't want to miss that weekend. I, I was here several years. I think it was in 2017 when he preached here. And uh, I, 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 I va vaguely remember, but it was, a, it was a great time. This house was packed out. God moved. There was testimonies, reports of, look what the Lord has done. Isn't it cool how when he's preaching, he does the thing where he's like, uh, like, like, you know, like Southern, Southern gospel preachers? <laughs> Come on. I, I got to learn that. I got to incorporate that into my preaching. Uh, just kidding. But, uh, but you, you, you're going to be blessed by this weekend, and um, God's going to show up, I promise you. Um, the, the church leadership's going to be praying and fasting and uh, just expecting. How many want God to do something in, in Winnipeg? Amen? And uh, so when we come on, on those weekends, God's going to show up, and, and we're coming hungry for God to move. So we encourage you, mark that in your calendar. Um, I said it before, but he's, he's not bringing a revival. We are in a move of God. We are in revival. God is working. God is moving. He's just throwing some, 
some gasoline to the flame. Amen? So uh, please come to that weekend. Mark it in your calendar. Invite somebody. I believe we have invitation cards at the hospitality desk. Is that correct? And uh, so just on your way out, maybe grab some, invite someone, and it's going to be an awesome time. And uh, we encourage you to do that. So at this time, we're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings. Sister Diane's in the back if you want to give by debit or credit. The ushers are going to bring the offering plates up here to the front. At this church, we like to march around the front and present our gifts, our tithes, our offerings before the Lord as an act, as a sign of worship to him. Um, I encourage you tonight to... The Bible says, give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If you haven't tried God in this area of finances, I encourage you to try him. The Bible says, test me in this, says the Lord. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that there will not be enough room to contain it. That's the only time that God says, test me. So I encourage you tonight, um, as we just continue this atmosphere of worship, uh, just, just give unto the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. I believe there is there a kids club tonight. Oh yes, there is. Okay, so there is kids club tonight. The kids club is dismissed to the back. God bless you guys. Let's give unto the Lord in Jesus' name. to the word of the Lord tonight at this time. Amen. We're going to turn to John chapter 4 and verse 19. 
Amen. We welcome you again to service this evening. Those who are watching online, we welcome you with us this evening as well. I want to give a bit of a victory report. One of our church uh, people had reached out to me uh, back a little bit ago and said, will you please pray? I'm going for a job interview, and I desperately, desperately need a job. So I said, well, we will definitely be praying for you. And uh, today, um, somewhere along the middle of the day, I got a message from her. And she said, Pastor, she said, I got called back from that job interview, and they did not offer me the job that I interviewed for, but they offered me a better job than that. Praise God. Amen. Isn't that like the Lord? Amen. He wants us to be the head and not the tail. Amen. If we will follow him and obey his word, amen, he will bless us. Amen. Praise God. John chapter 4 and verse 19, we're going to read about the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan, and uh, she went there when nobody else was around because she was not only was she a Samaritan or what the Jews at that time considered to be a half-breed, but she was a woman of a reputation, and uh, she was an outcast in her own society. And Jesus said, we must go through Samaria and the whole, whole reason for the detour was that he was going to talk to this one woman. And this one woman actually became the key to her whole village breaking out in revival. Amen. Don't ever discount somebody because they don't live up to what we think they ought to be. God has a way of taking uh, something or somebody who everybody else would throw away. And doing something great with them. And so John 4.19, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and yet you guys say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither worship in this mountain nor at yet at Jerusalem, but worship the Father. You worship you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to preach to us tonight uh, along the topics of why we worship, why we worship. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word that is forever settled in heaven. It doesn't change. I pray, God, you would speak to us from your word, challenge us tonight, and let us leave this house better worshipers. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So if you're going to know how to be a worshiper, you have to know what worship is. The word worship that we just talked about when Jesus said the Father is seeking worshipers. How many know that God is looking for worshipers? He's looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The word worship comes from the, uh, the Greek word uh, pros, uh, proskuneo, and it means to kiss or to lick like a dog. Doesn't that just change well, you, your thoughts about worship all of a sudden? I, have, I, I, I don't know. I hate being licked by a dog. And I have a dog that wants to lick you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. When I walk through the door, she knows I don't like it. And she's there in a way. She don't care that I don't like it. She's going to lick me whether I like it or not. To me, it's to kiss or to lick like a dog, like a dog licking his master's hand, to crouch, to prostrate oneself down in homage, to reverence or to adore. What if we worship God like that dog who meets his master at the door just happy to see him and wanting to lick his hand? If we came into the presence of God happy to be there, wanting to impress our master, wanting to love our master and honor him, 
And if we lived our life, not only in our worship services, but if we lived our entire lives as worship unto God, how effective we would be as the people of God. And so worship is, is uh, it's a heart posture. It's, it's bowing ourselves before God. It's wanting to, to honor Him, to love on Him, to show affection to God. We worship him for several reasons. First of all, we worship him for what he has done. Is there anybody in the room tonight, God has done something for you in the past? I know our crowd is down tonight, but can I get a witness in the house? Is there somebody that God healed you in your past? Oh, look at the hands. God delivered you of something. Oh, yes, in your past. He picked you up when you were all the way down. Oh, yes, he did. He provided a, a money for you when you didn't have money to pay your... Come on, who am I preaching to? He put food on the table when you didn't know where it was going to... Oh, I've been there. I didn't know where it was going to come from. And I heard a knock on the door. I opened the door and there were groceries on the step. I remember having... Uh, a Chrysler Intrepid car, the tires on it were getting bald. And uh, I heard some commotion all around the car one day. And I went out, and it was a couple of the board members from, from the church I was pastoring. I said, what are you guys doing? He said, Pastor, we're putting four new tires on your car for you. Amen. But that's uh, only God knew that I needed that. Hello? Washer and dryer broke. Hey, man, we were at well a washer and dryer. A knock came on the door. Pastor, we're here. What, what, what are you guys up to? We got a brand new washer and dryer on the back of the truck. Could we bring it in? Oh, I'm telling you. Hey, man, God has been good. I worship him because of what he has done for me. He healed my, oh, I feel like I'm preaching coming on. He healed my body when I was sick. He picked me up when I was down. He brought me up out of the miry clay, put me on the rock, Christ Jesus, established my, somebody testify in the house, God has been good to me. And even when I'm going through a rough time, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when I look back and see what God has done for me, it makes me want to shout. It makes me want to sing. It makes me want to clap my hands, jump up and down, rejoice. Because if God did it yesterday, he can do it today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So true worshipers have a past. They have a past, amen, a testimony of the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. If God has never done anything for you in this house today, you need to start praying big prayers and start getting a testimony behind you that when the going gets tough, you can look around and say, it was there, God met me, and if God met me five years ago, he can meet me again today. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, Pastor Ose. <laughs> Praise God. And so we worship him for what he has done. We worship him because we know he touched us. There are people in this church that worship him because he has brought them back from the brink of death. There are those who worship him because he's put their marriages back together again. There are those who are in this house that worship because God, amen, touched their mind. God delivered them from addiction. Amen. They have a reason to worship God. I worship him for what he has done. Oh, but that's not the end. I don't just worship him for what he has done. I worship him for what he is doing. Is there anybody else could wave your hand and say, God's working in my life? God, oh, yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. God's working it out. We're not quite there yet, but I see the hand of God in my family. I see the hand of God on my children. I see the hand of God in my marriage. I see the, hey, I see the hand of God working on me, and so I'm going to praise him not only for what he has done, but I'm going to praise him and worship him for what he is doing. God's not dead he's surely alive I feel him in my hands I feel him in my feet I feel him in my heart I feel him all over me he's alive and well and he's working his hand is not shortened 
that it cannot save. Woo! His power has not been limited. That in 2024, that he's not working. Oh, I know people don't like it. We have cessationalists who said that God has quit. God has quit. There's no more miracles. There's no more tongues. No more gifts of the Spirit. No more prophecy. No more move of God. I don't know the God they're serving because the God I'm serving is still alive and well and he's working. Even when I can't see it, he's working. Even when I can't feel it, he's working. And so I worship him because of what he is doing. When I look around this church, I can see what God is doing. I can see. I think it was Pastor Heather one time. Uh, she said to me, she said, Pastor, how do you do it? She said, how do you walk into this church week after week knowing about this problem, that problem, that marriage, this situation, that circumstance? How do you do it week after week and not get discouraged? I, told, I said this to her, and it made her look at me like I was crazy. I said, I'm like a giraffe. <laughs> she was, she, I think she was waiting for some deep spiritual answer. I said, I'm like a giraffe. I said, I've learned to get my head up above it. I've learned not to look low. I've learned to look high. Oh, there's a message in itself. Stop looking low. You got friends in low places? Well, I got friends in high places. I've learned to stop looking low. I started looking high, and I see what God is doing. Uh, this person's not doing so great, but this family's on fire. This relationship's not doing good, but God just put this marriage back together. This one's sick, but this one just got healed. This one backslid, but this one just got delivered. I think I'll look at what God is doing. <laughs> Let me just say this while I'm on it. If you want to see what the devil's doing, you don't have to look far. Take a drive down Main Street. Actually, you probably won't have to do that. Step out of our doors. Stand there for five minutes. You'll see somebody walking by, not in their right mind. <coughs> Go knock on the door across the street. You'll find lives in disarray, marriages in hopeless situations, children being neglected. We are surrounded by it. If you want to chase the devil, you will never have a day where you are bored. But if you want to chase God, amen, and you will find out that as much as the devil is moving, God is moving greater. We've got to get our eyes off the devil, get our minds off of the devil, and get our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And look what the Lord, oh, why don't you push your neighbor and say, God's working in my life. God's working on me. God's working some things out for me. It's not all doom and gloom. God is working. I worship him for what he's done. And I worship him for what he's doing. And then I also worship him for what he's going to do. <laughs> My God, I could almost run an aisle on that one. I worship him for what he's going to do. For your children that he's going to save. For your husband that's going to get delivered. For the new building he's going to give us. For the souls we're going to water baptize. For the hundreds that are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. For cripples who are going to get out of wheelchairs. For those who are addicted that are going to be set free. Excuse me for a minute. I think I'll just worship God for what he's going to do <laughs> see Jonathan Super's not the only one who can do it <laughs> 
I come to tell you, God has not given up. God has not retired. God is still God and he's working. The best days of the church are not behind us. My God, if you're watching me online and the best days of your church that you attend is behind you, run out of there. Don't even, don't even, don't even stay long enough to get your purse. Just leave it. Run out of there. Go to some place that has a future. Go to some place that's praying. Go to some place that's seeking God. Get into a church that's worshiping. Get into a body of believers that has their eye on the future and what God is doing now and what he's going to do tomorrow. Hallelujah. I thank God for my yesterdays, but I can't live there. I thank God for revivals gone by, but we can't go back there. We've got to go ahead. And just as much as God is working in the today, he is also working in our tomorrow. I wonder, oh God, how are you going to do it? I was here the other night. And after music practice, I was talking to some of those on the worship team. And we were talking, oh, how's God going to do it? We're going to need a new building. How's God going to do it? It's going to be millions of dollars. How's God going to do it? But let me tell you something about God. He is already in my past. He is right now in my present. And he is already in our tomorrow, standing in our new building, saying, hey, I've got it all figured out. Just trust me. I'm in your tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm in your next week. I'm in your next month, your next year. I am a God who never stops working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Lord, help me. I didn't plan to preach like this tonight. So we worship him for what he's done. We worship him for what he is doing. And we worship him for what he's going to do. And more importantly, most importantly, we worship him for who he is. Oh, yes, we do. Because the fact of the matter is this. If he never did another thing, he is still deserving of our worship. Oh, yeah. If he never opens up another blinded eye, if he never heals another crippled person, if he never curses another cancer, if he never moves in my life not one more time, Pastor Ose, God has been more than good to me. He has been faithful. The fact that he saved my soul from sin is enough for me to worship him from now until all eternity. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of you, who you are, I will lift my voice and say, I will worship you because of who you are. Psalm 150 and verse 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. Oh, we thank him. We thank God for his mighty acts, for his acts yesterday, for his mighty acts today, and for his mighty acts tomorrow. But the next verse says, praise him according to his excellent greatness. I praise you for what you've done, but I praise you for who you are as well. All right, I gotta hurry. Lord, help us. They didn't put the timer up, so I don't even know. I think we're good. Why do we worship? Well, here, go to Acts 16, verse 25. Worship when you're in prison and need deliverance. Oh, I thought we were just supposed to worship in good times. No, 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 no. You've missed it. I said you missed it. Worship when you're in prison and need deliverance. And at midnight, somebody say midnight. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. Praise them when you're in prison. 
Praise Him when you need deliverance. Praise Him when you're in bondage. Praise Him when the walls are closing in on you. Praise Him when it seems like Satan has thrown you in jail and thrown away the key. Praise Him in a way. Praise Him at midnight. Praise Him at your darkness hour. Praise Him. Because worship has the power to shake your prison and set you free. I watch this in church sometimes. And I think, oh Lord, if they would only get it. If they could only get it. I see the heaviness on some. I see the imprisonment that some are in. And I feel the glory of the Lord in the place. Oh, I feel the touch of God. The power of God is in the house. And they're sitting there in prison. They're not singing. They haven't lifted a hand. They haven't clapped. They haven't even tapped their big toe. And they're just sitting there. Don't you realize when you're in prison, it's not the time to be quiet. When you're in prison, it's time to pray. And it's time to worship even when everybody else is sleeping even when everybody else is quiet begin to pray begin to worship and watch if God doesn't shake the whole place my God I wish this was Sunday the other part of this is your worship not only has the power to shake your prison but to shake everybody else's prison. Your worship not only has the power to set you free, but it set everybody in the prison free. You don't know who's dependent on your worship. I've been in services. I've been in this most of my life, all my life. And I have seen services dried back home. They used to say it was twice dead and plucked up by the roots. That's a dead service. I remember what, we were in church. See, my, my pastor was old school. I talked to him the other day. I was such a, such a blessing to get to, that he's still alive, and I was able to talk to him, and, and we were reminiscing. But I remember services where everybody was sitting on their hands. Nobody was, t was too awfully concerned about worshiping. The song leader did their best. The musicians did their best. And I watched my little pastor, he was just a little man, walk to that pulpit. And instead of patty cake and rubbing everybody on the head, kissing the babies, he said, this service is dismissed. Go home and don't come back until you want to have church. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, because God God can't do nothing if you're not going to worship. God ain't going to do nothing if we're not going to pray. God ain't going to move if we're not going to move. God isn't going to respond if we don't respond. Oh, my God, help me to preach here tonight. But I remember growing up in church and there would be kind of a dead service. And all of a sudden, one dear sister or one dear brother who hardly ever got excited, I would see the Holy Ghost move on them and it would blow that service wide open. All it takes is one person to start singing at midnight. Oh, Lord. Why else do we worship? We worship when our children need help. But we want to do the opposite. When family crisis comes, we're going to worry about it. Well, we're, going to, we're going to sit on our hands. Hello, Matthew 9, 18. Well, he had spake these things. Then behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him. What? What's going on here? What, what? All right, first thing he did was worship. The second thing he said is, my daughter is dead. That preaches in itself. The first thing he did, did was worship. The second thing he did was tell Jesus, my daughter is dead. You see, you got to get things in the right order. Don't tell Jesus it, but what's dead until you've worshipped. Oh, my Lord, help me tonight. <sighs> don't bother telling him what needs to change and what needs to happen and what needs to resurrect until you have first worshipped this man understood it he fell down and worshipped and then that worship got Jesus' attention 
it, it, it hasn't changed. He inhabits the praise of his people. You want to get God's attention? Worship him. Worship him. And so he worshiped. People come to church. I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it like brother so-and-so does. No, of course you don't. I just don't seem to feel what Andy feels. No, I believe you. Because you're not worshiping like Andy worships. Oh, I knew I wasn't, nobody was going to run the aisles on that. Hello? I just, I'm just, I just don't feel it. No, because you're getting it backwards. You think you're supposed to feel something and then worship. No, 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 no. You worship and then you'll feel something. We're doing all right tonight. It's our worship that gets his attention. You see, the, the, please help me. I'm not trying to be uh, argumentative here tonight. But, but we get so, so high and lifted up. that When we come into church, it's like God just says, oh, they're here. Whew. All right, everybody. Angels, shh, they're here. They're here. See, they're here. No, no, no. We worship. And our worship gets his attention. Even in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, you wanted to get the king's favor. You would come in and you would bow before him. You would, you would perform. Maybe you would dance. Maybe you would, would give him an offering. Maybe you would give him a gift. And when the king stretched out his scepter, that meant you were approved and you could approach the throne. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's what worship does for us. When we come into the throne, we come in boldly, but we come in with worship. We come in with praise. And when we worship him, he extends the scepter to us and then we can ask whatever we want of him oh I gotta move on so he said my daughter's dead come lay your hand on her she'll live Jesus arose, followed him, and so did his disciples. Behold a woman which was diseased, we talked about it on Sunday, the woman with issue of blood came, touched his garment, she was healed he went in and he raised up the daughter and she lived again but before there was a resurrection, there was worship. When your family's in trouble, worship. When something in your house has died, worship. When you're not feeling God like you used to feel God, worship him. When everything's going wrong, worship him. All right, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Matthew 15, 21. Jesus went thence and departed in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried on him, saying, Have mercy, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. He answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth. For she, 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 she didn't understand how to approach him. She came, Heal my daughter. Nothing. Nothing. Ignored her. Heal my daughter. No. Nothing. Kept on going. He answered her not a word. He said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25. But then she came and what? Worshipped him. Whew. And something shifted. You see, we think worship, if, if we feel good, we'll worship. I watch it all the time. And even tonight, I came in at the beginning of the service. I was so weary. So tired, but I, okay, preacher, you gotta, you got to push through the flesh here. And I, I, I'll, I'll watch people come in, and I know they've had a hard week, and I know something has happened, and they're, they're upset. And they'll come in. Other people are bouncing off the walls, swinging off the ceiling fans, high-fiving, body surfing, and the Holy Ghost is moving, and they're just, oh, I just don't feel it. No, of course you don't feel it because you haven't worshipped. Worship will always cost you something. Worship will cause you to put the, your flesh on the altar and sacrifice it. Hello? It's, worship is never about us, how we feel, what happened to me this week. Worship is always about him. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. And she's worshipped and it shifted something. And he raised 
and, and delivered the child. Listen to me now, church. Choose worship over worry. Because I have seen worship change everything. And I have never seen worry change anything. All right. Next thing. Lord, help me. I got to get through this. Worship when you need healing. Oh, well, I'm sick. That's the time not to worship. No, that's the time to worship. Hello? Matthew 8, 2. And behold, there came a leper. And what? Worshipped him. You see, there's an order of how things happen in the kingdom. Worship precedes everything. Our Father, the Lord, he said, he said, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, what? Hallowed be the name. The Lord's prayer starts with worship. The leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Worship brought him in to the realm of the supernatural. Worship attracts the healer. All right, moving on. Worship when the devil has run you out of your mind. We'll let that one sink in for a second. Worship when the devil has run you or has tried his best to run you out of his mind. Mark out of your mind, Mark 5, 1. And they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, just snapped them, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. You think cutting is new? No, no, no. That's an ancient spirit. Cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and... And Jesus said, what is your name? We are legion. Excuse me, what was that? Bob? Bill? We are legion, for we are many. Well, this is a sore throat. It makes me sound demonic. This man had 2,000 demons in him. But 2,000 demons could not stop him from worshiping. I'm just having a bad day. I can't worship. Not true. So-and-so's mad at me. I can't worship. Not true. Oh, I'm sick. I can't worship. Not true. If 2,000 demons couldn't stop this man from worshiping, your bad week should not stop you. He fell down and worshipped him. Cry with a loud voice, what do I do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said to them, come out of the man, thou walk clean spirit. What is your name? He said, my name is Legion, we are many. He besought him much that they would not send him away out of the country. And asked him, just send us into the pigs. And Jesus cast them out into the pigs. The verse 13 says, they went out, entered into the, sw the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place. He literally jumped off the mountain and into the sea. Because even a pig is smart enough not to let the devil have his way with them. And they drowned themselves. 
in the sea. You see, nothing confuses the devil any more than when you worship instead of giving up. When he lets you have it with everything he can give you, and you just get up and say, well, bless the Lord. He's like, excuse me? He comes at you again, gives it to you, double barrels. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It confuses him and sends him into a fit. And hell does not know how to handle a worshiper. Hear me tonight. Hell does not know how to handle a worshiper. Having a breakthrough. Why don't you have a breakthrough instead of a breakdown? Break through with worship instead of breaking down with worry. <laughs> because worry is trust in the devil and worship is trust in God. I don't know how it's all going to work out, but I'm going to praise him in a way. I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but I'm going to worship him in a way. I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to praise him. Even though I don't know how this is all going to come out, I will bless the Lord. All right, hurrying on. We worship because he is our God. Psalm 95 and verse 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Psalm 118 verse 28. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God. I will exalt thee. We worship him because he is our God. Isaiah 25, 1, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. Why do we worship? We worship him because he's holy. Psalm 99, 5, exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. When you catch a glimpse of his holiness, it will transform your worship. When you see him as holy, you will understand we have no choice but to humble ourselves and worship him. Why do we worship? We worship because of his loving kindness and truth. Psalm 138 verse 1, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. <coughs> I will worship toward thy holy temple. I will praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Why do we worship? We worship because he is righteous. Psalm 7 and 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Why do we worship? Well, we worship when we are discouraged. Psalm 42 verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Oh, my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan, from the Hermonites and the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep, and the noise, at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. When you worship in the midst of discouragement, it drives back the darkness and makes a way for the light to shine again. When you are discouraged, worship because it attracts his presence. And in his presence, the heaviness goes. Worship when you have a need. Psalm 74, 21, oh, let the oppressed Oh, let not the oppressed return in shame. Let the poor and needy praise thy name. It's easy to shout when you have everything, but worship happens when you have nothing and you can still praise him. The Lord giveth. 
and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship because of his mercy. Psalm 86, 12, I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. The mercy he has shown you ought to make you want to worship him. When I see where he brought me from, what he saved me from. The songwriter said, when I look back and see where he brought me from, I'm a mighty long way from where I used to be. I worship him because of his mercy. That's enough. That ought to be enough for any of us to be true worshipers. When we see what he saved us from, it ought to make us worship him. When you have an appreciation <coughs> that you were lost and going to hell, but Jesus saved you and gave you a future. We worship him. Why do we worship? We worship him because he's good. Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. The goodness of the Lord should cause us to worship him with everything we have. Why do we worship? We worship because we're alive. Hello? Psalm 104, verse 33. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Why should I worship God today? Because I'm alive. We used to sing a song. I'm, I'm, all these old songs are coming to me tonight. We, we used to sing a song years ago. I'm glad to be in God's service. Do you know that one, Sister Kathy? I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm glad to be in God's service one more time. And the second part of this, he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. Yeah. I'm glad to be in service tonight. He didn't have to let me live. I worship him because I'm alive. Hallelujah. Psalm 146.2, while I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise. I am, I am rushing. I am rushing as fast as I can to the close. We worship because he hears us. Psalm 118 verse 21. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and has become my salvation. We worship because he is just. Psalm 119, verse 64, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. We worship him because of his name. Psalm 148, verse 13, let them that praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Psalm 34 and 3, O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We worship him because of his mighty name. And now I'm coming to the close right here. How do we worship? Psalm 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. What does that mean, praise? You see, anybody can praise. I believe that. Now, I've heard preachers preach opposite. I don't agree with them. People say, oh, praise and worship are the same thing. Not true. Praise. I can praise you. Good job. Good job. I can praise my dog when she poos outside instead of in the house. Hallelujah. Good dog. Good dog. But I ain't going to worship my dog. I can praise Pastor Dylan. That was a good message you preached, but I'm not going to worship him. Praise is lip service. Praise is a little clap of the hands. Praise is a job well done. But worship comes from the depths of the soul. That when I've been in my lowest pit 
and I've walked through my lowest hell. And when I've got nothing left, I will worship him for who he is. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and heart. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. People say, all right. I have people say all the time, dude, you know, is this biblical shouting and dancing? And is it? Well, I think I just read it. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him on the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 47 verse 1 says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. People say, is all this shouting really necessary? No, you wouldn't understand because you've not, you, you haven't done it yet. But when you let out your first shout and you feel something shift in the Holy Ghost, you'll understand the power of a shout. See, people who shout don't go around after they were done thinking, was that really necessary? I really shouted today. I don't know if I should have. Well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done. No, no, no. People who shout can't wait till next Sunday to come back and shout again. And they don't even just shout on Sundays. They'll shout on a Monday. They'll shout in the bathroom on Tuesday. They'll shout at Walmart on Wednesday. They'll shout in their car, drive it there, because they understand the power that's released in a shout. Oh, Lord, I... I could preach on this all night. i got to close. Praise you, the Lord. Psalm 149, verse 1. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Oh, Lord, we could preach on that one for an hour. Praise in the congregation of saints. 1 Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Luke 7, 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, stood at the feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. However you praise him, praise him. However you worship, worship. I've had people tell me, Pastor, I see people jumping and shouting. And they said, all I can do is stand there and cry. Go ahead. Cry. Give it to God. There's a time and purpose and season for everything. There's a time to shout. There's a time to run the aisles. There's a time to jump. There's a time. There's time for, then there's a time just to get at his feet and weep. And what I'm just telling us tonight, church, is we have every reason listed and many more that I don't have time to go into to be worshipers that stand together. And I know it's Wednesday night, and, and I know the crowd is down, but can we just all get around the front? We're just going to worship God before we leave this place tonight. You might not bounce off the walls. You might not swing off a ceiling fan. But somehow, some way, would you respond to God? Pastor, I just don't feel anything. That's okay. You don't have to feel anything to give God praise. You don't have to feel anything to give God worship. Come on, every worshiper in the house, let's get around the front. Let's get around. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord together. Go ahead, just lift up your hands. Amen. There's no, there's no program at this point. Amen. We've got the offering. We've sang. We've preached. Right now, let's just worship the Lord. Let's just worship God and see what he does in this house right now. Let's just worship the Lord and see who gets healed right now. <laughs> let's just worship the Lord and see who gets touched right now in the presence of the Lord. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's just worship the Lord and see who gets, amen, encouraged by the power of God. That's it. Go ahead. Worship him. Worship him. Pastor, I'm in prison. Oh, that's a great place to worship. Pastor, it's midnight where I am. Oh, perfect timing. Go ahead and shout a little bit in your prison. Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know what you're going through. Oh, I just need to know that you're a worshiper because if you're a worshiper, you're going to be all right. If you're a worshiper, you're going to come out of whatever it is you're in. If you will worship God, it will turn around. If you will worship God, there'll be a shifting. There'll be a breaking. Oh, hallelujah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on, let's worship the Lord. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues as you worship the Lord here tonight. Yeah, you could be healed right on the spot. Just like last Sunday, somebody was healed instantly during the worship. Come on, that's how it's supposed to happen. You can be encouraged. You can be delivered. You can be set free. Let your worship take you into the presence of God right now. Let your worship take you before his throne and have his scepter reached out towards you right now. I worship you. I worship you, God. I worship you. You alone are worthy of praise. You alone are worthy of my worship. You alone, God, are worthy of anything I can give you. I exalt you. I adore you. I praise you. That's it, child of God. Give him your voice right now. Give him your voice right now. Hallelujah. You are the only God. You are my Savior. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You're my counselor. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. I don't need to go to a mountain. I can worship God right here. I don't need to go to Jerusalem. I can worship God in my house. I'm a worshiper. Devil, you don't know who you've tangled with. I'm a worshiper. You can't take me down. I'm a worshiper. You can't destroy me. I'm a worshiper. I worship my way out of every dilemma. I worship my way out of every hell. I worship my way out of every valley. I worship my way out of every sickness. You just stand back, devil. I am a worshiper. You can't handle me. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Worship him for something that he's done. Worship him for something that he's doing. Worship him for something that he's about to do. Go ahead. Go ahead. Worship him for who he is. Come on. It's just you and God right now. You're not judging your worship by anybody else. It's you and God right now. I worship you in the good times. I worship you in the bad times. I worship you on the mountain. I worship you in the valley. I worship you in a fiery furnace. I worship you in a lion's den. I worship you in prison. I worship you on a sinking ship. I worship you when I got a snake attached to me. I worship. I worship. I worship. I worship. When the devil's attacking my family, I'm going to worship. When the devil's attacking my children, I'm going to worship. When the devil's attacking my finances, I'm going to worship. When the devil's attacking my health, I'm going to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. That's it, church. That's it. He's looking for a true worshiper tonight. He's looking for a true worshiper. That's it. That's it. Break the alabaster box. Break the alabaster box. Put it on his feet. Anoint him. Anoint him as your king and savior. Approach him with adoration. Approach him with praise. Oh, God, you're good. You're so good. You're so good. 
I just feel like encouraging somebody. If the way you're worshiping isn't getting you into his presence, shake it up. Go a little bit further. Do something you've never done before. Take another step. Push your way in. Oh, God will never refuse worship from his people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I worship you. I worship you. God, Believer's Church worships you tonight. We exalt your name forever. We lift you up because there is nobody like you. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. From your heart now. Come on. Yes, you are great. You are glorious. You are amazing. You're excellent. You are the Alpha, the Omega. You are the beginning, the ending. You are the first and the last. There is no God before you. There is no God beside you. Oh, you're holy. You're righteous. You're magnificent. You're glorious. Ah, you're kind. You're just. You're faithful. You're true. You're a nail in a sure place. You're my healer, my deliverer. You're my savior, my counselor. You're my friend. Oh, you're the Lamb of God. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. That's it. Just push on in a little bit further. Hallelujah. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I've got a reason to worship. I've got a reason to worship. I have a right to worship. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship. Come on, 
Believers Church, I will always worship you, saying I will and I will not be silent, I will always worship you, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you, and I will, and I will not be silent, I will always worship you, see as long as there's forever, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you, use my worship, Lord, use my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, use my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, of my worship, come on, say use my believers church all of my here it is Lord here's my worship Lord receive my worship Lord
worship him for a bit. Come on, say, my response is a hand clap of praise. Amen. How many were blessed by that word tonight? Hallelujah. Because, you know, we've turned like worship into singing on Sundays, but you can worship God every day. You can worship God when you're driving your car and all of that. So I, I just encourage you tonight. Don't let this word fall to the ground. Maybe you're here and, and maybe you're not used to this style of worship or whatever. Take this home. When you go to sleep, to, before you go to sleep tonight, worship God. Amen. Like, lift your hands up in your room. Yeah, he sees yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. God, I praise you. I worship you. And he shows up in times like that. And that's why the enemy fights us so hard. I remember when I first got saved, and I would come to worship services, and everybody's raising their hands, and I want to raise my hand. But that voice, don't, don't do that. You're going to make a fool out of yourself. But that's the devil. He doesn't want us. The Bible tells us to raise our hands, but the enemy doesn't want, because there's breakthrough in that, just like yeah. we read. Paul and Silas chains broke, prisons um, shaken, and people were set free. And that's what happens when we praise God and when we worship him. He Amen. shows up, his presence infiltrates the room, and uh, he wants us Amen. all to experience that. So I encourage you, don't let this word fall to the ground. Go out of this place as worshipers, worshiping when you're at home or whatever, and at church. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this word. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that we can worship you, God, regardless of the situation, whatever we're facing, God. You are worthy to worship, Lord. You are worthy of all of our worship, Lord. Even if you never did anything for us or whatever, God, you, you are worthy. And we thank you for this word tonight, Lord. God, I pray that Believer's Church would be a worshiping church, Lord, not only on Sunday or when there's service, but, Lord, at home and, and that our houses and our, our where we, where we reside in, Lord, would be places of worship to God. So, Lord, let your presence leave with us as we leave this place, God. Protect us. Order our steps, God. Be with us through the rest of the week, Lord. I pray, God, that we would leave this place worshiping you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you guys.